back, relax, maybe get yourself a snack. Me and you gonna have a little chat about books. Hi guys, so I am here today to do a book review and the book that I'm going to be reviewing is Dreamwalker by J.D. Oswald. This is a book that I picked up solely for the beautiful cover. I think it is impeccably wonderful. The glitter on the front and the dragon and everything works so well and it's embossed and it's gorgeous. So I will tell you guys now I picked this up 100% for the cover. I didn't know anything about the story. I didn't know what people thought of it. I didn't know what the reviews were like. Didn't really know anything other than it must have dragons in it because there's a dragon on the front. But I ended up really being pleasantly surprised by this book. I actually really enjoyed it. I thought it was very, very fun. This is a reproduced version of this book, so it's actually been out for quite a while, quite a few years, but this is the new released edition and I think it works well. Obviously this cover drew me in enough to make me buy it, so yeah, it's a really lovely book. This is a story that focuses mainly around two central characters. We have number one, Benfro, who is a small kitling, which is a baby dragon. He has been born on the same day as our other main character, but they don't know each other. They do meet each other on the day of their births, but they obviously don't remember that. So they grow up in their own places. Benfro lives in a village which is made up of dragons and the village is hidden from the men because the men in this world don't like dragons very much and are not very nice to dragons. So Benfro, all of his life, he has just been surrounded by dragons. He doesn't know much about the ways of men. He's quite naive, but he's a very sweet and kind-hearted dragon. He wants to help people. He's very inquisitive and curious, and he's a very fun character. I really enjoyed his storyline. I felt like it was a very interesting one. A lot of stuff happens, and he learns a lot of things. He also does a bit of investigating, which is always a lovely thing to see. And he was just a very, very sweet character to read about. So I enjoyed his a lot. The other major character was Errol. Errol, as I say, met Benfro on the day that they were both born, but has not met him again since. He actually grew up in a village not too far away from where Benfro lives, but they don't know of each other. Errol grows up as the son of a herb woman, a medicine woman, but he's not actually related to her. He is actually the heir to the throne and he has been hidden away in this village because there were people who were trying to kill his mother when she was pregnant with him and they succeeded in doing that. They succeeded in killing his mother, but not before she gave birth to him. So he has been hidden away in this village so that no one discovers him and no one finds out that he actually has a good claim to the throne. Errol is a very intelligent boy. Again, he's very curious and inquisitive and he learns very easily and quickly. So he's very, very good at reading and he's very inquisitive about everything he sees and wants to find out lots of stuff. He also wants to join the Order of the High Fjord which is an organisation where they train you to be either spies or they train you to fight or they train you to hunt dragons. And he's really interested in all that stuff. He really wants to grow up and be a part of them. But one day they come to his village to collect the new people for their order and he's by this time changed his mind and he doesn't really want to go with them due to things that have happened in the book. And the story really kind of takes off once he gets selected to go with them. Even though these two characters, they don't meet each other directly in the story, their stories do actually influence one another and we see different things from different points of view that affect the other society. On the whole, I would say that this is a really, really fun kid's story. It combines dragons and men well. It kind of shows the conflict that they have. Some men like dragons, some dragons like men, vice versa. But there is a lot of conflict, there are laws that govern the dragons and how they should live and the dragons don't want to abide by these laws so they flout the laws and they do their own thing and the men don't really understand that they have been doing this and when that gets discovered all sorts of madness is going to ensue. Basically it's a great little story that I really enjoyed and didn't expect to. It starts off very slow, I will say that now. It was not a very fast beginning, I thought it was going to be a lot quicker, it wasn't, it did take a while to get into the story. The first third is quite slow, it's very much set up, and then the middle is getting a bit more interesting, but the end is where it really takes off. The last third of this book was very, very interesting, very exciting. I would say that this is more of a setting up book for book number two than it is a book in its own right. I feel like book number two is going to be really, really good because of the end of this one is very, very dramatic. But book number two doesn't actually come out until November in this edition, so I'm going to wait for it to come out and then get it. 
but I did really enjoy this. I thought it was a very, very cool idea and I just like the writing style. The magic within this world is really interesting because it is using grim lines. Grim lines are basically these magical lines, tangible lines that you can see and you can use to kind of create magic. And it's a really, really cool idea. I like the fact that you can see these glittering lines and that you could use them in certain spots, like certain places have more lines where there's more magic and so on so that was a really really cool idea. I also like the fact that both men and dragons used the same type of magic but they used it in their own ways for different things so that was a really cool thing and I'm certain that in the later books it's going to be developed more. We also have use of Welsh words within this or Welsh sounding words within this that were really cool because that does kind of relate to dragons. If you hear any Welsh spoken it does remind you of dragons. Obviously they have the dragon on their flag and it kind of made it more believable and more interesting to read. The only thing I would say is that the dragons in this book are not as well described or developed as I would like them to be. I would like to know a little bit more about how they actually look because we don't know that much about that. It's not as developed as it could have been but maybe that will come in the later books I don't know so and they're very human in their personalities. They don't do much stuff like animals. They're very much more humanoid. So that's an interesting thing. But I liked it. It was all right. Hopefully that will, as I say, get developed further on. So overall, I ended up giving this book a four out of five stars. I think it's a really, really nice, fun read, very lighthearted and very enjoyable. And I would definitely recommend this. I would love to hear if you guys have read anything by this author or this book in particular. Let me know and I will see you all very soon in my next video. Bye! Me and you gonna have a little chat about the